This video is a guide to reading critically and giving constructive criticism when supporting our fellow authors and peers when writing a peer review. Peer reviewing in science is the cornerstone to research. Scientific journals do not and should not be published until they have been verified by other experts within that area of research. There are two elements to a peer review. First is the reading and evaluating of the work to strengthen the paper and check that no mistakes have been made and that there aren't any potential problems in the research. The second is the feedback, offering suggestions for how the paper can be improved. Peer reviewers ensure the quality of the research being published, benefiting the greater scientific community and all those who depend on it. So how do you read critically? We are not looking for grammar and spelling, as this should be saved for proofreading. Rather, you are looking for the strength of the arguments and the clarity of the writing. A thesis always explores a research question or problem. It is necessary for an author to show that the question has been approached analytically by carefully presenting the order of the ideas or results in the scientific study that led to the final conclusion. Some characteristics of a well-crafted argument are being explicit, here the author is aware of and clearly states the assumptions, inferences and reasoning that connect the different parts of the work together. It should be significant. The research question and conclusions are not trivial but have a clear impact on the field and the author has explained their significance. It should be concise. Only information that is pertinent and necessary to the argument should be provided. And it should be consistent. There are no contradictory statements or elements within that argument. To guide your reading, you should be able to answer the following questions. When looking at the argument and the conclusion, we're asking, what is the main argument and point of this section? Is there a main claim? And if not, do you understand the author's intent? Is the argument supported and how? How is the quality of the supporting points? What is the conclusion? There might be more than one. And does the conclusions answer the research question? How acceptable are those conclusions? When looking at the supporting information, we're asking, does the author provide two to three subclaims? And do the subclaims support the thesis statement? What are the claims? Are the claims easily identified? And if not, what could the author add? What do you think of the examples, evidence or data presented? Can you see how they relate to the argument? Is the author presenting facts or opinions? And how are they used? Is there any more information that needs to be provided before the conclusion can be accepted? Does the author support their claims with evidence and reasoning? Where is more evidence required? Where could the author provide more reasoning to make connections between claim and evidence explicit? And do they address counterclaims to make the argument convincing? If not, what could they add? When looking at the author's purpose, you're thinking about what you think the author is doing in each section. Can you recognize the main argument? Can you recognize the conclusions? How? Are you able to follow the reasoning? And why? How is the structure? Does it flow well? And are the connections between the ideas clearly made? What about any ambiguous words or phrases? How might they be clarified? When providing criticism, it is about explaining to the author how you as the reader understood the paper. First explain how you understood the material. This way, the author can make sure there were no misinterpretations and that their intention was clear. It also helps the author understand where your feedback is directed. Try using phrases like, from what I understand, in this section you are, or it seems to me that the focus of this section is, how about, I'm not sure I understand the main point here, it seems to me, and provide your reasoning. After indicating your understanding, you will know if that was the original intention. If not, then ask further questions to help the author articulate their meaning, such as, what is the purpose of the section? Why is it important? You can also indicate sentences or paragraphs that you are uncertain about and ask for clarification. Finally, you can provide further feedback on the presentation of the material. Is there anything that seems unnecessary or unclear? Is there anything that doesn't flow? Maybe indicate arguments that seem weak 